Assalamu alaikum, greetings and peace. How are you guys doing? Another week, another exciting episode on the Dean Show. Subscribe right now if you haven't. Take a moment, take a moment, subscribe and get our shows delivered to you every week. Why not benefit? We bring on so many enlightened guests, qualified academics, because how silly do you look? Does an individual look who goes on Fox News, for instance, who goes out there quoting certain verses from the verbatim word of God out of context, as if that person is an expert? Well, we have an expert. Because if you want to learn, first you've got to be sincere, have the right intentions, and then go to the experts. And that's what we bring on here on The Dean's Show, people who are qualified to go ahead and explain the verses, people who have studied the Arabic language, academics in this field. And my next guest, Dr. Mustafa Khatab, is this week's special guest who's translated the clear Quran, verbatim word of God. So you get a different feel, a different understanding when you come because if you're his blood pressure, as he talks about, was going up from listening to Fox News and many of the other media outlets who bring on supposed experts. Imagine how your blood pressure, when certain verses are quoted out of context, must have been going up and the fear was developing that trepidation in your heart because some Islamophobe has got you caught up in the Slavophobia machine and you're getting the mistruths, misinformation directed towards you. It's, it's very scary, it's very frightful, but thank God you've been led to the Dean Show so you can go ahead and hear it from the Muslims, from people who are qualified in this area. So you have a very exciting show. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to the Dean Show. How are you guys doing? We have another great and exciting show for you. I'm with our special guest, Dr. Mustafa. Assalamu alaikum. Peace Assalamu be with alaikum. you. Thanks How are you, Shay? Very good, alhamdulillah. How you been? You're good. coming in from Canada? Yes, yeah? alhamdulillah. Now, how's the uh, prime minister there? He is doing well, alhamdulillah. He, he's doing well. He's making the connection with the Muslims. Yes, he's not building any walls or anything. No walls over there, <laughs> no huh? Walls. <laughs> Uh, we're, I, I wanna, I wanna. Time is short. I wanna get right into it. You know, there, there's, a, there are a lot of misconceptions revolving around this book, actually, the Quran. Yes. Right. People pick it up, and they say, "Look, how can you guys be people of peace when you have all these violent texts in there?" And you know, some of these young kids, they pick up this Quran, and this inspires them to do something violent. No quote, Surah nine twenty nine, or others. Are you familiar with? Yes. How do you address this? Well, it's a book, and it has to be read in context. When you take something out of context, you can make the author look terrible. And we can do the same thing with any book, including the Bible. There are passages in the Bible where Jesus said, for example, do you think I have come for peace? I have not come for peace, but a sword. Or something like, bring all my enemies who don't believe in me and slaughter them under my feet. This is not, so wait, this is supposed to be the Prince of Peace, who we actually love, by yes. the way. Jesus. Yes. Many people don't know that, but so you're quoting from the Bible. Yes. All you need to do is put it back in context and read the verses before, the verses after in the Bible, and it, it's something totally different. Yeah. But if you want to twist and play, of course, you can twist and play. Of course. Yeah. So all you have to do is, of course, number one, you have to ask for a reference because most of the time I see, you know, Fox News, other uh, news channels, they say that the Quran says this, but they don't give you a reference. And if they do give you, you have to go and read it in context. Read the verses before and the verses after, and you'll see that it talks about something totally different. Like the, f the most frequently quoted verse from the Quran, kill them wherever you find them. So this makes f you feel like, oh, they're talking about kill them wherever you find them, at Walmart, everywhere. When you put it back in context and you read the verses before and the verses after, it, it says something totally different. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, tell me, what is the difference between when you actually, because many people, they'll pick up the Quran in English, and you've also had some authors who, with some malicious intent, they've actually translated, they're not even Muslim, yes. and have you come across these, these translations that deliberately are meant to deceive people? Well, that's a very the, good question. So uh, they they'll have some <laughs> right context. They'll have some some right trans, but they'll they'll because the Arabic explain to us how deep the Arabic is. For you just put one wrong word, right? You don't know the the uh, the the um, 
the you're not an expert in the Arabic language, the the sira of the history of Prophet Muhammad, etc. And now you're trying to you know uh, in, in translate this Quran. Yes, the question always comes up. Uh, why do we need a new translation? There are hundreds of them over the last 1500 years. And I say, well, if you look at the translations of the Quran, the Prophet ﷺ passed away in the year 632, common era. And the first English translation of the Quran by a Muslim was done in 1905, which means for over 1300 years, the Quran was never translated into English by a Muslim. And this explains, of course, uh, they were mostly done by uh, Orientalists, mm. by missionaries. And uh, this explains why we still have some words in translation like holy war, infidels, whereas we don't have this in, in Arabic, right? And after this, after 1905, so many translations were done by Muslims out of pride or out of zeal because they wanted to defend their faith. And they didn't have, many of them, they didn't have the qualifications. They didn't speak Arabic. It's not their native tongue. They didn't study translation, Quranic studies, Islamic studies. So they didn't have the background. And this is why the translation, you know, their translation is not better off than many that were done by non-Muslims. So, uh, there are four things that I needed to achieve in this translation. And I think when you look at any translation of the Quran in English, you have to look at four things. Number one, accuracy. How they understood the Arabic text. And because there are so many terrible mistakes in translations that were done by, by non-Arabs. Uh, you know, uh, I'm not saying any bad thing, but when you translate using a dictionary, you can't translate the Quran by just using a dictionary, right? You can translate the newspaper, but not the Quran. I'll give you one example. A very common mistranslation is in uh, Surah Anbiya, chapter 21, verse 87, where it says, إِذَّ مُغَاضِبًا عَلَيْهِ So everyone says that when uh, John, uh, when uh, uh, when Yunus alayhi salam, uh, Jonah, he left his town in a rage, he thought that Allah had no power over him. How can a prophet think like this? This is not the correct meaning, but this is what you get when you translate using a dictionary. The actual meaning is, he thought that Allah would not restrain him. And this verb is used in the Quran, Allahu yabsutu rizqa liman yasha'u wa yaqdir, restrain, and he put him in the belly of the whale. So accuracy in understanding the Arabic. And number two, clarity. When you translate from Arabic into English, you have to make it understandable. The Quran describes itself as Al-Quran Al-Mubin. And this is actually the uh, name of the tr translation, the clear Quran, Al-Quran Al-Mubin. Mm -hmm. It has to be understandable because it's for everyone, Arabs and non-Arabs, Muslims and non-Muslims. So when you translate it in a very archaic language, style, it makes it very difficult for people to understand. So this is number two. Number three, eloquence. The Quran in Arabic is so powerful. And when you read translation in English, it's, it's not, you know, it doesn't reflect the beauty and the power of the Arabic. And this is something we try to do, and you have the sample right there. And number four, the flow, how it flows. So we avoided all the parenthetical information, like half a page of parenthetical information to explain one concept, like muttaqun, uh, tawheed, and all that stuff. Uh, you need to keep the flow going. Uh, to, to be enjoyable to the reader. And these are the four areas, accuracy, clarity, eloquence, and flow. And this is, I believe, what makes the, trans, uh, the clear Quran a, a good translation. We hear this often, the two statements that you, the two words that you mentioned, holy war. And infidels. And, and infidel. Yes. That, that uh, what, from my studies, what I've seen is, if we go from back to front, Infidel, this is something that was coined by the Christian crusaders at that time, yes. right? Against the Muslims. Yes. So this is not an Islamic concept, infidel. They'll throw this out there. It's a dirty word. It's like, right? What's the proper translation coming? Because they translate that from what? Well, from the word kafir in the Quran, a disbeliever. And guess what? Muslims are called kafir in the Quran. Because if you believe in mm. something, you have to disbelieve in the opposite. فَمَنْ يَكْفُرْ بِالطَّاغُوتِ وَيُؤْمِنْ بِاللَّهِ فَقَدْ اسْتَمْسَكَ بِالْعُرْوَةِ الْوِثْقَةِ Allah says, whoever believes in Allah and this believer in false gods, so you are a believer in Tawheed, one God, you have to be a disbeliever in the Trinity and in other forms of shirk, for example. Yeah. So it's not a negative word in the Quran. It's not a derogatory term to non-Muslims. Because if you believe in something, you have to disbelieve in the opposite. Mm -hmm. Of it, does it mean to cover up the truth, to conceal yes. the truth when you get when you go into the the deeper meaning? Yeah, what they cover it? belief with Co disbelief. 
to okay so a disbeliever to one who covers the truth yeah a farmer in the quran al kuffar yeah. are called uh, kuffar in the quran because yeah. they are farmers they cover yeah. the seed with dirt yeah so it's not a horrible word as they make it seem like like infidel and all that stuff yeah so so that you don't find that actual word infidel that's an english word so that's not that oh. would okay uh that another thing is holy war so oh, you guys these these uh radicals out there you know islam is encouraging the holy war is there such a thing as holy war well there's nothing holy about war uh the prophet sallam even in his teachings uh, he said, لا تتمنوا لقاء العدو. Don't ask Allah to meet your enemy in battle. Mm. He said, don't ask for it. But if it's forced on you, you have to defend yourself. And in Surah Hajj, chapter 22, it says that the reason that the believers are allowed to fight is to defend uh, churches, to defend synagogues, and to defend mosques, and to defend uh, the weak and the oppressed. So it's, it's used for a good reason, not just to go out and push everyone to accept Islam because Islamically you cannot force someone to become Muslim. So th this is th these um, verses of combat are in combat situations can you say? Yes. And there's a just war theory? Yes. That would equivalent to that right? Yes. Okay. Uh, let's take a break and we'll be right back with more with Dr. Mustafa here on The Dean Show. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to The Dean Show and I'm with Dr. Mustafa who has translated the copy the it's called the clear quran and you're responsible for helping to put this together yes yeah so give us some give us some you're gonna give us some some examples of some mistranslations okay please go ahead well the uh, story behind the clear quran uh, uh, august 2013 i was in toronto canada a visiting imam and i just gave juma khutbah and I was coming back to the hotel, mashallah, dressed up like an Arabian prince who just came out of the desert. You know, the thobe, the flowing rope, and uh, turban, and mashallah. So if you have been to Toronto, I've met so many Muslim cab drivers. But that day, it so happened that the cab driver was not Muslim. And I, I don't usually force, uh, you know, religion on anyone, unless they have a question. So that day, the non-Muslim cab driver said, you know what, Muslims are good people, but Islam sucks. I said, okay, thanks for the compliment about Muslims, but, but by what do you think uh, Muslim Islam is, is an evil religion? But he's insulting you in another <laughs> way. <laughs> yes. So I said, why? He said, because your book, the Quran, calls me an animal. And I said, subhanAllah, I'm Hafiz, I know the whole Quran by heart, and it doesn't say that anywhere. And he said, no. Uh, chapter 8, verse 55. And I told him the word dabba in the Quran does not mean an animal, it means a living being. And this is explained in another verse in the Quran, chapter 24, uh, verse 45. Mm -hmm. uh, it says, uh, chapter 24, verse 45, Allah created every, every living being out of water. Some of them crawl on their bellies, some walk on two feet like you, some walk on four feet. This is what Allah says in the Quran to explain this concept. He says this is what his uh, translation said. So that night I went to my hotel room and uh, I checked, there is a website, it's called Islam Awakened. Uh, they list like 40, 45 different translations of the same verse. And he was correct. Most of the translations said animal or beast. They are both as bad. but. A living being or a moving creature would be a good translation. So this is why we decided to, uh, you know, to uh, do a new translation of the Quran and correct some of these misunderstood concepts about the Quran because this can easily be used to give Islam a bad name. Like this one right here. In Surah 3, Al-Imran, Ayah 106. It, it talks about the Day of Judgment and it says on that day, some faces will be white, some faces will be black, or at least this is what most people say in, in translation. But it's, it doesn't talk about black on white, because Bilal radiallahu anhu was a black man, and his face will be bright on the Day of Judgment. And Abu Lahab, or Abu Jahl, they were white people, and their faces will be gloomy. It talks about uh, you know, the fact that faces will be gloomy, even if they were white, and some faces would be bright even if they are black. It doesn't talk about black and white. So when you read this in translation that black people are going to Jahannam, the hellfire, and white people are going to Jannah, this sounds very racist to me. But the Arabic, the actual meaning is bright and gloomy. And this is explained in many ayat in the Quran. It explains this concept. So this is another example. Also, when people translate and they don't know 
the uh, the historical background and the ver of the verses. Like, say for example, when they translate 53, uh, Ayah 27. لا لا Those who don't believe in the hereafter, uh, everyone says, they give angels uh, female names. They give them female names. And I'm looking at all the names of angels, and none of them is a female. But if you understand the Arabic uh, you know, belief at the time, before the Prophet ﷺ, the pagan belief in Arabia at the time, they believed that the angels were the daughters of Allah. But they didn't give them female names. They just classified them or labeled them as female. And this is the right translation. They don't give them female names. They label them as female, as the daughters of Allah. So this is the proper understanding. Uh, so these are some of the uh, things. Uh, also, we try to reflect some of the linguistic issues in the Quran. For example, this is a, a good one. Uh, chapter 94, verse 5 and 6. فَإِنَّ الْعُسْرِ يُسْرَ إِنَّ الْعُسْرِ uh, we have to understand when something is repeated in the Quran, it is repeated for emphasis. Even if in Surah Rahman 31 times. And this is no different than I have a dream, let freedom ring by you know uh, Martin, Martin Luther King, King just yeah. for emphasis. But when you see a story like, for example, Moses is repeated all over the place, or Ibrahim alayhi salam, but when you look closely, the focus shifts all the time. So in Surah, for example, Surah Qasas, the focus is Moses' uh, childhood, how he killed an Egyptian by mistake, how he escaped to Median and got married. You read Surah Araf, chapter 7, it talks about the persecution of Bani Israel. You read Surah Kaf, it talks about his encounter with al khid The focus is always different. But here, فَإِنَّ مَعَ الْعُسْرِ يُسْرَ إِنَّ مَعَ الْعُسْرِ يُسْرَ Everyone says in translation, with difficulty comes ease, indeed with difficulty or hardship comes ease. They don't understand that when something is repeated in Arabi, uh, there is something there linguistically. For example, the two words repeated here, Al-Usr is repeated twice, it has Al. If something is repeated with Al, it means the same guy. I met the guy, I gave the guy money. Mm -hmm. Al means that. It's the same guy. Yusr, which is ease, is without the, definitive, uh, the definitive Al, the, it means like, I met a guy, and I gave a guy some money. It's a totally different guy. So what Allah means here, it's one difficulty, but two eases. So the actual translation is, with, with every difficulty comes ease, then with that same difficulty comes more ease. And this is totally lost in translation, mm -hmm. this linguistic aspect, but yeah. I think it's a beautiful thing if you put it in there. So, so, so far we have... Uh, some things that are very, very important when someone is approaching the Qur'an to be careful from being deceived is, A, we can say the cut and paste, yes. like taking, let's say, one verse and then be snapping it through the middle, like, uh, what can I think of? Uh, the Qur'an says, uh, don't uh, approach prayer, yes. right, uh, intoxicated. So if you cut that off, the intoxicated part... But then someone can go further and say, look, I'm not intoxicated. They can play with it and say, now I'll pray. Yes. But now they'll miss out the verses where, and, and, and uh, about um, uh, drinking totally. And then, the, and then the deeper, so we have the cut and paste. You mentioned the before and after. We have the linguistic. And then you have the, the historical context. And yes. then what else am I missing? Uh, if you Then just taking everything as a whole. Yes. You have to understand the Arabic. The Arabic. You have to be able to translate it into good English. Yeah. And have to reflect the beauty and the linguistic aspects of the Quran. Yeah. And how silly do you? I mean, do you? How do you? When you see some of these people that they bring up, this is just. I mean, this is just mind blowing. You turn on some some of these like channels, Fox News, and they have some like so called like Quran or uh, Islamic expert on the show. Yeah. Have you seen them? Yeah, of course. Actually, I did my uh, PhD dissertation on how Islam is portrayed on Fox News. Oh, yeah. For five years, I was watching five, uh, Fox News day and night. And uh, two things I have now that I didn't have before I started watching Fox News, blood pressure and heart attacks. Sheer lies, total lies, you know. And, and they know that the people who are watching, they don't have the uh, background and they don't have the proper knowledge of Islam. So they just, they can spew hate and uh, they can just say nonsense. And many people are willing to believe. All you need to do is think for yourself. Is this a bad religion? If it's a bad religion and the Quran is a book of violence, how come that Islam is the fastest growing religion in the world? 
how come that so many people are accepting this religion? If Islam is so violent and abusive to women, how come that 75% of all reverts to Islam are women? My name is Yvonne Ridley. And my name is Nabila Zahir. The Muslim faith is under the spotlight again, and this time its detractors and critics are wondering why more women in the West are embracing Islam than any other religion. Yes, in their eyes, Islam is supposed to be a religion which oppresses and subjugates women, or that's what the critics want everyone else to think. And the profile of the new converts has them baffled. According to figures from a multi-faith group called Faith Matters, those most likely com to convert to Islam are career women in their 20s and 30s. The number who've converted has now passed the 100,000 mark, with 5,200 recorded last year alone. They are choosing to reject the excesses of Western lifestyles such as consumerism and immorality. But before we introduce two Muslim women with amazing stories to tell... So there has to be something to it. So all you need to do is just read it with an open heart and open mind and think for yourself. You are, an intelligent, you are intelligent enough, smart enough to read and think for yourself. Don't let other people with agendas do the thinking for you. Yeah, capitalize off of your ignorance uh, with fear. We're going to take a break and be right back with more. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to The Dean Show. I'm with Dr. Mustafa Kitab, and you translated the clear Quran, and we're talking about giving the criteria for someone because they're not Arab-speaking. And someone said, well, why did God reveal the Quran in Arabic if he wants me to understand it? I speak English or French or German. How would you answer that? Well, that's a very good question. What if God, if Allah revealed the Quran in Chinese, the Arabs would have said, well, we need a Quran in Arabic. And the French would have said, okay, uh, we need the Quran in French, right? So Allah revealed the Quran, and we know that the Quran is the richest language on earth. It has more vocabulary than the next five, seven languages combined. Mm -hmm. It's a very rich language. And subhanAllah, I remember when I was working on this translation, it took us about three, over three years to, to finish this work. And I, you know, all these... Uh, sleepless nights. I was awake up all night thinking about how powerful the Arabic is and how weak the English is. Like it's, it's like when you have a bucket of water and you try to pour this buck, uh, you know, uh, bucket of water into this small cup. Mm. It will be, you know, overflowing. The Arabic is so powerful, so beautiful. Subhanallah. Even people are moved when they listen to the recitation of the Quran in Arabic, even if they don't know the meaning. But if they understand the meaning, they would be more moved and impressed with the, uh, with the recitation of the Qur'an. So God knows, Allah knows what He was doing when He picked this particular uh, language to preserve the final, last and final uh, message uh, to mankind, the Qur'an. He knew what He was doing. And don't you see, it's ironic, you know, uh, many people, uh, these are some, you know, if, if you're sincere, you're going to see... Uh, through it but sometimes people you know they they throw these things out there but that person who might have said that he learned like you know different languages to impress that woman he loves yes, too, right? yes. <laughs> yes. the so, arabic language sounds good and it looks good when you see it in calligraphy yeah. it's 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 very beautiful yeah and i will give you one example how rich the arabic language is in english you have one word for lion l-i-o-n mm -hmm. in arabic we have more than 37 words for lion in english it's what one, lion. One. So now you have what synonyms and words for that? Yeah, a Fit? word that means lion in Arabic, we have more than 37. Wow, that's deep. Yeah. So uh, Very then, rich language. Yeah. Let's continue on with some more of the uh, mistranslations uh, that you can share. Yes, another us. example from uh, Surah 12, Yusuf, Ayah 33, Joseph. So for example, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قَالَ رَبِّ السِّجْنُ أَحَبُّ إِلَيَّ مِمَّا دُعُونَنِي إِلَيَّ In the Arabic language, we have a pr preferential st uh, style we call tafdil, which means that two uh, things or two people have uh, one quality in common, but one of them precedes the other. Put it this way. Say for example, um, I'm tall or handsome, and brother Eddie is, more, is uh, taller than me, and he is more handsome. So we share a quality, right? But sometimes you see this style in Arabic and it doesn't mean this preferential st style. Say for example, when Yusuf alayhi salam, Joseph in this uh, Surah 12, verse 33, it says, Rabbi sijnu ilay. It says, Ya Allah, going to jail is more beloved to my, my heart than committing adultery with these women. It doesn't mean that both of them were beloved by him. No, it doesn't mean this, that he loved adultery, but he loved going to jail more than committing adultery. No, he said, and this is our translation, Ya Allah, 
I would rather go to jail than to commit what they, what they are asking me to do. So there's no preferential style here. When Lot, Lot السلام, Lot, is asking the men of his nation, لكم, My daughters are here, the daughters of, you know, the singles of his ummah. Marry them. Everyone says in their translation, they are purer for you in marriage than uh, it's understood that he's comparing marrying women to being with these men. Uh, you know. Mm-hmm. So of course it doesn't mean this in Arab. It means that these women are pure for you. Men are not pure for you, period. So there's no comparison in purity. They don't share the same quality. So when you translate it literally, then you have a problem in the understanding of the Quran. Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, tell me, for someone now who's maybe tuning in for the first time, and some people put all religions in the same boat. Oh, it, maybe this Quran is just another scripture. What differentiates the Quran from other, I like to say, man-made religions? Okay. First of all, you have to read and think for yourself. As I said at the beginning, uh, if you have a number of scriptures in front of you, read all of them and see which of them makes more sense. Which one is applicable, which one is practical, and which one is closer to uh, our uh, daily lives here. When you look at the Quran, number one, it challenges you from page one. It says, There's no contradictions in this book. If you want to prove me wrong, find one. And it says, if you believe this book is not from me, produce one like it. Produce a Quran like it. If you can't, produce ten chapters. If you can't, produce one. They, they couldn't do it. So he's challenging you. We know that the Quran is not a book of science. Um, it's a book of signs, right? So it puts a lot of scientific references in the Quran about the, uh, d- you know, the developmental phases of the embryo, embryo inside the mother. The Big Bang is there in chapter 21. It talks about the constant expansion of the universe. All these scientific references in the Quran, at least from the perspective of Maurice Bukai, a French scholar. He said, I did not find a single contradiction, scientific contradiction in the Quran. So the Quran is always challenging you to, uh, to read and look and reflect and to challenge the Quran to see if it's the word of Allah or not. Is there any other book like the Quran where the author states that, look, I am the creator of the heavens and revealing this book that is challenging the reader like the like this Quran, that is making the claim that this is from the creator of the heavens and earth. I have not come across I any book either. that says that. No. You can't just For, give a paper to your teacher and tell him, I challenge you if you find a mistake in, in, in my paper. No. But Allah does this in the Quran. Mm-hmm. Now, how would you contrast that to with the Bible? Well, if you look at the Quran, the Quran, from what I know, is the only book that does not have the name of the author on the cover or in the table of contents. When you go uh, to the table of contents of the Bible, for example, there are so many writers, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and the Old Testament, and Paul, and so on and so forth. You can't find this in the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not have his name on the cover of the Quran, but he reveals himself in every line and every verse in the Quran. So on every the, page, uh, God Almighty's name is mentioned on every... Yes, yeah. and he describes himself, he talks about himself, this is what I need from you, do this, don't do this. He speaks with an authority. He speaks with an authority, and he knows people more than they know themselves. The way I see the Quran, when you buy a, a laptop, for example, it comes with a manual. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is our manufacturer, He is our creator, and He gave us the manual. If you live by this book, you will live a good life, you will be able to function as a good human being, and you will achieve happiness in this dunya and salvation in the next life. What's the main theme of the Quran? What, what, what is the Quran calling humanity to? Well, two things, and this is the message that was shared by all the prophets of God from Adam to Muhammad, peace be upon all of them. Everyone said the same thing. Abraham, Moses, and Jesus, all the prophets, they said, have faith in one God and be a good guy, be a good person. If you look at the Ten Commandments, the first four of the Ten Commandments say, worship one God, serve Him alone, and from five to ten, don't kill, don't lie, don't steal, be a good guy. And Jesus, السلام, peace be upon Him, said, love God with all your heart and love your neighbor you know, as, yourself, as you lo- love yourself. So it's always about your relationship with God and the relationship with His creation. Mm-hmm. Be good, have a good relationship with God, and be good to everyone, humans, and animals, and all of the creation of Allah around you. Mm-hmm. This is a common theme in the Qur'an. Uh, we're coming to a close. We're going to wrap it up. Uh, you, you have this uh, uh, chapter 4 of the Qur'an? Yes, a sample. Yes. Now, this is a sample regarding? Yes, the clear Qur'an, my translation of the Qur'an. Okay, so this verse in uh, chapter 4, 142 says, Surely the hypocrites seek to deceive God, in Arabic, Allah, but He outwits them. 
when they stand up for prayer, they do it half-heartedly only to be seen by people hardly remembering God, Allah, at all. Torn between belief and disbelief, belonging neither to these believers nor disbelievers. And whoever Allah leaves to stray, you will never find for them a way. Yes, so you'll see a lot of rhymes in the mm -hmm. translation. So the youth can also connect with the, with the translation. So this is an example how you translate it, how it flows. Yes. Yeah. Very, very powerful ayah, as the whole Qur'an is powerful. Uh, the organization for Khan gives these out for free. Yes, Al-Fur Khan Foundation, yes. Uh, yeah, so how can someone get this now? If they want, uh, we got not, a lot of not yet Muslims out there. Simply Muslim is what? Who surrenders, someone who freely, consciously surrenders and submits to the same God Jesus submitted to, Moses, Abraham, the one who created creation, God Almighty, Allah. And now they want to they wanna connect with the Qur'an. Yes, you can order. This? You can order a free copy online. Go to orderaquran.com and you can get it for free. Mm -hmm. Yes, and you can get the uh, Arabic English for the Muslim audience. They can get it from uh, Al Furqan Foundation. This one here, just nineteen ninety nine. This one is uh, twenty uh, twenty four ninety nine. So it's yeah. affordable. Yeah. But reliable and authentic. That's these with the Arabic, and, and then this one for Congress for free for, yes. the, for the not yet Muslims out yes. there. The one, our brothers in humanity, it's English, humanity English one, only. Yes, in, English only, because the 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 original is in Arabic. It's, this is the author's humble attempt in English to translate it. Yes. All right. Uh, to give the meaning of the Quran. Yes. Uh, how could people hook up with you? Well, uh, my email is there. Is there info awesome. at mustafakhattab.org. So Fox News, they realize they got it wrong. <laughs> and they want to make up for all this blood pressure that they're causing not only the Muslims and but the heart attacks. Th yeah, the heart. The people now imagine you have the knowledge and you are you are getting like you know uh, pumped up. Imagine those people who don't know how much fear is being propagated through people's ignorance. You, wow, it's amazing. So they can hook up with you if they want to yes. bring you on CNN. Any of these? Uh, I'm here. That's it. Bring out a real expert of the Quran. Sheikh, thank you very thank much. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Jazakallah. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu That was Dr. Mustafa Khattab translating the clear Quran. The Quran is clear with a clear and simple message. It's from the Creator, identifies to be as such. The message is simple, it's believable. It's from the same Creator who revealed the Ten Commandments to Moses, the Torah to Musa, Moses, to Jesus, the Injil, and all the preceding messengers before them. They all called you to the purpose of life, which is to worship, to serve the Creator, to worship the Creator, not the creation, that pure monotheism, warning people about the Day of Judgment, Paradise, Hellfire, accountability in this life, and being good, doing good deeds. And nowhere in this book, the Quran, does it call for any kind of injustice? And that would be an injustice to go ahead and kill innocent men, women, and children and to rain havoc on the earth. So Islam is a just book from a just God calling you to be just, to be peaceful, and to live life according to God's will, not your desires. That's the main theme of the Quran. And we got to clear up some of these misconceptions that I'm sure you've been hit with how to understand or approach the Quran, not doing the cut and paste or forgetting the before and after context and the historical context, the linguistic context, understanding, and also taking the Quran as a whole. That should tell you a lot. If you are getting your information with someone who's not qualified in this area, they shouldn't be speaking on it. But we bought, brought someone to you who was qualified. So I really hope that you got to benefit from this exciting episode of The Dean Show. Take a moment right now and subscribe. Like this video. Share it right now. Go ahead. Like it. Share so so it can get out to more people. And more people, we can help alleviate that, that fear, what leads to that blood pressure going up, bad health, and all the other negative consequences sometimes people even turn violent it's sad to say so call call us also call us 1-800-662-islam if you have any more questions and you like them to get cleared up and answered we're here to help and that's out of the love sincerely out of the love thank you very much we started with peace and we end with peace peace assalamu alaikum peace be with you